You good? You good? All right, guys, I'm back. We're gonna get started here. I got two screws out before the live stream ended. And thank you to uh, Amanda for the donation. Thank you. Appreciate it. So let's see if I could successfully change Neptune bearings <laughs> live with no edits. So no swearing, Marcus. All right, all right. Let me find my... I'll tell Jim no swearing. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Oh. Imagine if there's actually five people in here just sitting around watching. <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, guys. This is one of my favorite washers of all time. When I first got into the appliance business, I was, uh, well, I started when I was 18. And I think when I was age 20, maybe 23, I, uh, I bought a set of Neptunes for my parents. And it was like the, it was quite frankly, the first major purchase that I ever uh, did in my life because these machines were four thousand dollars for the set it was like 2500 for the washer and 1500 for the dryer i remember it pretty uh distinctly and that might have been with tax or whatever but i just remember it being like breathtakingly expensive and uh ironically my parents still have the machine so there you have it it's uh it's been about 20 years that they've had it and i've not put bearings in it yet So this machine, the bearings are barely, I'll, I'll give it a quick spin, maybe you guys can hear it. Now, it's definitely louder when it's spinning. Uh, you got someone saying, hey Gene, just thought I would say hi, this is the blind guy from Louisiana who likes the old, old washing machines. How's it going, man? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this prop up. Or at least keep it from falling. <sighs> hmm. All right, well, I'm just going to try that for now. And also, guys, just full disclosure, I have not prepared anything for in for fixing this washer. I'm going in blind. I don't even know if I have all the tools available. But and I'm going off of a old memory, so we'll see what I can do. Let's see. So the next thing is this clamp, and then I gotta undo the bellow and then I think I could pull this whole front cover off. Okay, I need my flat head. There we go. Oh also if anyone's got some feedback on the the camera angle and stuff or anything. Feel free to uh, leave a comment. This is one of the later model Neptunes. It's actually got an onboard heater, which is pretty cool. 
The one that I bought from my parents does not. Okay, I think we're ready to take the cover off and then I could spin the machine around and we could work from the back. Okay. I mean A806 said the first major purchase of his of my oh he means well like washing machine was my 1963 RCA Whirlpool Imperial Mark I think that's 12 in turquoise definitely worth it since I've definitely worth it since I've seen no others in the archives on AW other than the 64 models well that's that's cool man that's awesome yeah I um a lot of people have asked me whether I like I have a collection, and the answer is yes and no. I I do have a collection of of vintage appliances, but it I don't really consider it like my collection. Like I don't have any at my house. I like to uh, fix the vintage machines, and quite frankly, like I just do like several loads and I enjoy them for a little bit, and then I just kind of find a good home for them I um I'm a bit minimalist in nature so I don't really like to have a bunch of things so that's just how how I roll but look how gross this is guys oh and it smells bad too oh all right we'll clean that in the sink in a little bit so now I'm going to spin the machine around and we're going to get the tub disconnected and like we're already halfway done. This might actually be a short live stream, guys. I don't know. Okay, good. Thought it stopped there. We are all good. Cool. Thank you, Susan. Okay. Well, I so I need the model. Do you have the model number handy? He's on the phone, so he'll be right back. Yeah, and is this like an over-the-range microwave? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Hold, hold on. Let me let me grab Marcus. He'll look it up for you. Um, and then what part did you need again? It, is the is the microwave bed? Like like no power. Okay, there's probably a, an internal fuse. So all right, hold on a second. I'll have Marcus look it up. Okay. All right. It's it's Daryl's brother. Oh. Yeah. Hey, 
All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? I'm gonna take the belt off. And then I believe this is a half, if I remember correctly. Let me see here. That's a 7 16 Is this the half? Oh no, next size up. Oi, I should have cleaned my my tool area because it is a mess. Nine sixteenths, guys, for the record. What's that? Nah, not capacitor. It would be. Uh, so look at the parts diagram and see like if the cord plugs into like some sort of power board. Okay. And if there's a fuse on it, it's on that power board. But they might not sell the fuse separately. He might just have to open it up and it might just be a regular glass fuse. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm open. So uh, when the phone rings, I got to stop and answer it. Uh, so at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. I'm going to give this a little love tap just to free it up. And then I'm going to spin the washer around. Uh, or actually, maybe I'll pull the tub out and then I'll get the bearings out from the back here because this might be a little bit better of a vantage point. So let me just... And I highly recommend using a three-pound sledge. This is my probably one of my most used tools in this shop oh that's in there oh there it goes nice okay oh my gosh it's so gross Look at that. Ugh. That's like 20 years of goo buildup. But look at the condition of this spider arm. It's like practically perfect. I'm going to clean this in the sink and you guys will see it's like perfect condition. So the next thing is I'm going to need kind of like a, yeah, sorry, man. I wish a I rod or a drift. I'm going to use one of my punches. So this is just like a regular punch. You can tell this one's very well used. Uh, but you could use a solid piece of, like, as long as it's like a solid iron something, you know, like you can't use like a pipe or anything. It's got to be something that will transfer that energy yeah. from your hammer to the bearing and pop it out. Yeah, it's gonna be well. So I'm going to put some gloves on because I'm notoriously terrible at swinging a hammer. And I'd like to keep my hands from bleeding today. Yeah, so Stand by. So the trick is, is you want to like get your punch and try and go like in a circular around the bearing so that way you're tapping it out like evenly on like all the sides. I 
things. Mm. Oi. That's why I wear the gloves, guys. Ouch. Uh, that would have hurt a lot more if I wasn't wearing gloves. Okay. Well, the bearing's definitely moving. You know why I'm having such a hard time? I forgot to pull the seal out. So let me pull the seal out real quick. Oh gosh, it's so gross in there. Uh, I'll give it a, for those, somebody asked, uh, Ray, you asked if I was going to do a live load. I'll put it through a quick spin so you guys can see how quiet it is, but I don't know if I'm actually going to do a, fr a full load because there's nothing to see. The door, um, well, I can't easily defeat the front door. And when I, when I do, it's... Um, I have to tip the washer in such a way because so the water doesn't come out. So, all right, let me try and get the seal out real quick so we get the bearing. So it's really important when you take the seal out, don't immediately throw it away. So the Neptune kit, the seal kit, comes with two separate seals. And one is for the early version, and then the other one is for the updated version, which this one's the updated version. This is the revised one, they call. And so um, you're going to match them up, and, and so don't throw it away. Otherwise, you're not going to remember, and you might inadvertently install the wrong one. All right, well, let me see if this bearing moves a little bit better. Nice. So this is the spacer. We're gonna save that. And then this is the the old bearing. And it's not awful, it's tight for sure. Um, but I feel some kind of rumbling in it. And for those of you who think to buy like the OEM uh, bearing, that, I don't know if you can see it, it is made in China. So, either somebody put an aftermarket kit in this, maybe, or the bearings came from China. I actually, I, I'm beginning to think that maybe this is an aftermarket, because I think, I can't remember what the original bearing was, and I, th I think it was a different brand, but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Okay, guys, I'm going to spin around the other side, I'm going to tap this bearing out, this one should come out pretty easy. And then we'll clean it up and start putting it back together. Oh, wait a second. Someone said, are you going to get uh, do a test run after you're all fixed up? Yes, yes. I actually read that one. Gotcha. 
Also, uh, guys, some people, on some machines, there's a retaining clip on the back here. This one doesn't have it. I think when I did um, my original Neptune video, somebody had mentioned something about me not showing the retaining clip, but I think it's because not all Neptunes have it. So, like, this one doesn't have it, and maybe the one that I did doesn't have it. So, who knows? Let me put my gloves on before I bloody my hands up again. Oh, that's so loud. Oh. Wow, that's so loud. Did you get them both out already? No, I got the front one out, mm -hmm. which is the, that's the difficult one. The back one is, should just come out pretty easily. Someone asked, do the bearings have grease on them? So they don't have grease on them, but they do have grease in them. So when you buy a bearing that says uh, 2RS, that means there's two rubber seals, basically, um, and they come pre-packed with bearings. The only type of bearings that you're going to find that are not pre-packed is if it's like open um, type bearing. Uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're already pre-packed and there's no need to put like grease on or around them for any reason. I'm gonna put some ear muffs on guys because it's like when you stick your head in the drum and you're pounding, it like amplifies and it'll really uh, make your head ring. <laughs> but it looks like I got the bearing, it's popping out on this side. I just need to tap it at the bottom. That's got to be so satisfying to watch. <laughs> yeah. Not such so much to do. So, anyways, so the rubber seal fell off this one, but you can see inside this bearing, there is at least some remnants of grease uh, inside. So, this one was. This bearing is tired, but it isn't quite bad yet. But it is now because it's obviously. We, Hit it with a hammer. Whew, gosh, I'm going, I'm getting out of shape. <laughs> so people are talking about Bosch machines in the in the comments. Oh, everybody loves the Bosch machines. <laughs> I'm not a fan, honestly. Oh no, you might, you might start a riot. <laughs> but start a riot. <laughs> uh, all right, so I need my wire wheel. And I need my drill. This is not the right one. I had one that was skinnier than this one, and I'm, I'm sure I lost it at this point. That is a bummer. I'll just use my Dremel. I, I have a wire wheel on my Dremel.
Yeah, Ray, it's even it's even loud when you're not <laughs> doing it. It's loud for me. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think my the the wire wheel is off balance. That's why it's like vibrating loudly. Okay. You need me to grab some bearings for you? Uh yeah, grab me the bearing kit and a can of oven cleaner. And that's it. Just the bearing. Give me the deluxe. All right. Let's go big or go home. So guys, I actually sell a uh, I sell a bearing kit for this uh, machine, and it is the bearings, the seals, and you know basically everything you need minus the tools to fix a bad bearing on your Neptune. And it comes with um, my regular kits, just the bearing and seals, and then my deluxe kit comes with a replacement drive belt. You know, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, my belt is fine, but I'll show you in a minute just how not fine your belt is, especially if you've never changed it before. Nice. There we go. Cool. All right. All right, so I'm going to spin the machine around. I'm going to do just a quick spot clean here and I'm going to spin the machine around and we're going to clean the whole interior of the tub. And then I have to clean the spin basket too. So it's going to be a kind of boring for a few minutes until I get that all cleaned up. And uh, then we'll start putting everything back together. So give me a second here. Uh, someone asked what type of motor this, this machine uses. So this uses a... So it's an inverter style motor and, and they're typically a brushless DC type motor, or at least I think so. Gosh, 2004, were they using the BLDC motors? I think so. Yeah, I think they're brushless DC motors. So basically there's like a control board that converts the AC power to DC power and then sometimes on some motors, they convert it back to AC power, but they adjust the voltage and that's how the speed of the motor adjusts. And then on some of them, it's DC and they just provide the DC voltage. But I think it goes AC, DC, and then back to AC again. Maybe I'm wrong. Probably somebody knows better than I do. <laughs> That's clean. I'm going to spin the machine around. So if I wasn't live streaming this, I would install the back bearing and then go to the front and then start doing it. But I kind of want you guys to see the whole process. So I'm going to spin this machine around a couple times. Um, you know, because why not? Does the machine have a DC pump? It does not. No, it's the uh, drain pump is an AC motor. Regular 120 volt run of the mill. That is gross, guys. And I don't know why, but I use oven cleaner and it seems to work really well on this soap scum. Like, I feel like it's this is like fabric softener, and fabric softener has paraffin oils in it. And oil is like grease, and so the degreaser works best. And that's why you shouldn't use fabric softener, because it's gross. It's like putting oil on your clothes. <coughs> oh my goodness. I'm gonna get choked out. Sean said, he wonders what it would have been like if the old Whirlpool belt drive washers used roller or ball type bearings instead of sleeve bearings <coughs> and how much longer they would have probably lasted. <coughs> That's a good question because I don't think that a sleeve style bearing is any less reliable than a ball bearing. 
it just really depends on the type of application. Like Maytag uses a sleeve bearing that isolates the, the transmission from the outer tub and those basically last forever. Like they never go bad. I, they never go bad unless the tub seal leaks and they get wet and then they just kind of rot out. But if, if all things, you know, left alone, if the environment stays the same, they'll basically last forever. So now if you're using it horizontally, that might change it because you're applying kind of the load, like to the bottom of the machine or to the, to the, the sleeve and it might cause premature wear. I don't know. That would be, that would be a good question for like an engineer. Yeah. So that's a, I, that might just be a little bit above my pay grade, I guess. <laughs> All right, let me do a little bit more cleaning on the inside there. I think that's the inside is pretty clean. That smells so bad. Alright, let's see if any of this comes up. Workshop asked, do most people change out the bearings or are they told to just trash the machines? Well, quite frankly, I would change the bearings on this machine because the thing is, is that you cannot, for any amount of money, you cannot buy a front loader that was this well built that still uses like the 2002 like energy standards as far as like water consumption. A lot of things that people don't realize is that as machines got newer, the like energy restrictions became greater and greater. And so front loaders use less and less water, which is good for the environment, but it's arguably not the best for your clothes. It also takes a really long time to do a load when you're using less water. Hey. <laughs> Eugene, do you know who Bruce Campbell is? The actor? I can't say that I do, no. Someone well, said you looked like him and I just looked it up and I can see it. I can see it. What are you talking <laughs> You know, I had a video that like, I'm not gonna say went viral, but it like, I don't know, I think it got like, 80,000 views in like three or four days mm. and everybody called me I said I looked like the guy from Inside Out oh yeah the, the cartoon <laughs> yeah, guy like, yeah. especially when I had the mustache it was like eerily similar that's for sure yeah, I mean funny. I looked at it and I'm just like yeah that does look pretty close actually <laughs> Note to self, <laughs> let's get the fume free for the next live stream, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh, gosh. That's some good stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to let this sit for a minute and let the oven cleaner do its thing. I'm going to wash the spin basket in the tub. Uh, so if you guys want to get, uh, go make yourself some popcorn for the grand finale. I'm going to need like five minutes. I'll be back here cleaning a tub and then we'll get to the 
We'll finish the cleaning inside and then we'll start reassembling. <coughs> oh gosh, that's awful. All right. Does that one have a water balance on it? It does, it has a water ring. Ugh. This like barely fits in the... What's the model number on this one, Eugene? I think this was a MAH 6500. Yeah, this one's a MAH 6500 AWQ. The Q means almond in color. The, well, if it's an AWW, then it's in white. Or maybe Q is biscuit, I'm sorry. It's probably biscuit. I think biscuit. always mixes those colors up. I mean, they are close. I, I'm not going to lie. But biscuit is significantly lighter. Here's a question for you while you're cleaning. Have you ever had to work on one of the Maytag Halo of Heat style dryers? I have, but I have, I quite honestly have very little experience. I, even 20 years ago, I didn't see very many of those Halo of Heat dryers. Um, and I think I've worked on I worked on one with Bob. That brown one was the one. I, I helped Bob with that one. Um, and he kind of took it apart and went through it with me. But it's, um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not like, it's a lot more complicated than the updated design, that's for sure. But no, I don't have a lot of experience with those. I've probably only worked on a handful of them over my life. Got some speed queen debates going on as well, it looks like. Uh oh. About front loaders and top loaders. You said you, you don't. What were your thoughts on the front loaders? You know, I owned a front loader. Like, I actually had one at my house for like a year or two. And my wife made me get rid of it. She said it did a terrible job rinsing. I found that it, like, had a hard time balancing. And, and mine was like the newer style one. It was like after they updated something, I think either the shocks or... And it still had a hard time balancing. And I will admit that my wife does not do like large loads of laundry. So she was probably quite a bit of operator error. But even when I used it, I noticed that it, it kind of had a hard time balancing. It'd get there eventually, but just not like immediately like ILG does. And it's not worth the money. I mean, the problem is these are two thousand dollars now. Oh, wow. You know that? Like twice the price of the LG. Well, Marcus, you can answer that. The thirty-four hundred we're selling for what eight eight hundred bucks? Yeah, basically eight forty-nine. Um, and then, like the top of the line LG that we sell is the WM4000. And that one's only 1049 so. I think they're on sale now. Oh. I think there's a Memorial Day thing. I think the 3400 is like 800 bucks now. Yeah. Or something. But anyway, so 
Our prices fluctuate. We typically follow um, Home Depot's price just to stay like competitive. And so LG allows us to put things on sale every once in a while. And Home Depot knows exactly when. So we'll just, we put the regular price on it, like the, what's called the MAP. And then when it goes on sale, um, we'll just match Home Depot's price. So gross. This is like thick. Is that all just soap scum? Yeah, basically. A Maytag DG606. Is that a dependable care? Or is that before that? This guy said it's a 1973. That's a really good question. At some point right around there, they switched from the Halo of Heat to the. Go look it up on uh, DD. Okay. that it has like multiple belts or like or if you see the front view if it's if the heating elements like in a canister on the bottom it, right it does have multiple belts yeah okay so that one is a halo is that heating element show like around the front door type of thing uh yeah yeah like the the can is like right under the door basically. Hold on, let me see. Is that's this is the front door and that's the Oh yeah 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 the gas uh, yeah gas dryer duh. Yeah. yeah. So that's yes, the, that thing. is a halo of heat dryer. God that is so stinky. Oh you see your smell yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it is awful. Someone's asking your opinion on the, the all-in-one LGs. It's a great machine. It's the best combo unit you can get if that's your only choice. If you have the option of getting a separate washer and dryer, then you should. So like the combo unit is one of those machines where I say it's better than nothing. And so if, you, if your only option is to get a combo unit, the LG combo units are the best as far as performance and reliability and you know but they are pretty expensive still those are uh, not cheap not cheap machines that's for sure we haven't we haven't ever gotten any Miel washer dryers in here have we? Miela. Miela? Miel? Miela? No. We got the Ascos not too long Ascos, ago. Ascos yeah. Miela. Miela. Oh Miela those are the really expensive ones right? Yeah. Yeah. I, no, we haven't gotten, uh, it's, here in Cleveland, we don't have uh, too many uh, bougie people that are going to get a Mila. I don't even know if we have a, I wonder, do we have like authorized, do we even have an authorized Mila dealer? I'm not sure. I don't know, I got to get this. Okay, we'll pop back. Uh, no. No. Uh, Um, it looks like the only Mila dealers are vacuum dealers. Well, like, yeah, Mila vacuums. Yeah. I heard their vacuums are amazing, but I don't. I've never had one, so I can't. Uh... Coming 
not without a fight. That you're doing right now so this is the front half of the seal and it always comes off with the shaft and this one's really stuck on there normally it comes out without too much trouble this one's definitely giving me a hard time familiar with the the Kirby company someone said that Cleveland's home of the Kirby company yeah do you know where the Kirby plant is no it's uh like uh, basically like 117th of Madison oh really if you go into Cleveland like 112th that's where the Kirby factory oh yeah yeah, Kirby, yeah so we're very close <laughs> we're very close yeah you've probably driven by and not even noticed yeah yeah it's um yes I am familiar with Kirby's I've uh I've had a few over the years. My in-laws actually still have one, and she uses it, but she can't take it upstairs because it's too heavy. Like she's, it's crazy. Like Kirby's are awesome machines, but they're like cast aluminum, mm -hmm. and like probably like a twenty-five pound vacuum. Wow! Like it's got like you know. And back in the day, or not, I'm not back in the day, to this day, they still sell them new. They're like thousands, dude. They're crazy expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I just looked them up. They're, yeah, 114, it says. Or, no, they have two buildings. That's their, yeah, they're a big deal. Now, this is budget, finally. I've never had one come off with this much of a fight. It's crazy. How'd you get it? No. I mean, it's 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 going. I mean, here's what's left of the O-ring. Yeah, it's 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 moving along, but it's not without a fight, man. It's like one millimeter at a time. I made it, it's like moved so much that I'm surprised it's not like just completely let go. <sighs> Where's my wire brush? The, yeah, that's the one. Began, began close to Cleveland. Got Hoover, there's Swi or what was it, Swiffer, or isn't that in like Bay Village? The 
person that created yeah, the Swiffer. owner of Swiffer. Yeah. That's that that house that looks like the nursing home. Oh right, yeah, uh, <laughs> all glass walls. Yeah, yeah, not my taste, but Cleveland's big big sweeping state of her. That was a big sweeping state apparently. It's funny. A lot of clean freaks in Cleveland. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Well, evidently whoever owned this machine, not so much, but I take that back. This, there it is. God, man. There you go. Uh, no, it was North Canton. It was Hoover. So this is what I just spent the last whatever taking off. This is like the front part of this lip seal. So it goes like that. And so that's... When we pull out the new kit, we'll, I'll show you that this one matches very much to the new style uh, seal. Let me finish cleaning this up and we might be good to go, maybe. I was just thinking, Marcus, I like how I roped you into the live stream tonight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a live stream. And I'm like, you know, I'm now moderating. That's what I'm doing today. <laughs> Pretty fun, though. It's nice to see a nice little community here, you know. 30 people. How many? 30 people. Wow, wow 30 people. Thanks, guys. It's like, it's like kind of lightweight flattery. Yeah. Okay. Someone said, is there something that we can run through our machines so stuff like that doesn't build up? Well, don't run liquid fabric softener. And then, uh, I mean, really just doing like, if your machine doesn't have a self-clean cycle, uh, the trick is is to wash with warm water as often as possible because warm water in time will eventually dissolve this stuff but it's the I, I feel like it's the fabric softener that does it so here's our tub it's nice and clean now maybe not perfect clean but it's pretty good I'm gonna give this tub a scrub and see if we made any progress with the oven cleaner and guys, if you're going to do this job, certainly don't wear Sunday's finest because uh, you're probably going to get a little dirty. Mm, someone said a dishwasher tablet in a hot cycle. So hot. You know, I, yeah, I mean, dishwasher tablet is like kind of lightweight a degreaser. Yeah. It has like active enzymes that like, you know, eat through grease. I mean, yeah, I'd say that would be pseudial, but re really what's, what was that powder that I used? Uh, oh, sodium, or sodium percarbonate, that stuff. 
tri the trisodium per yeah. carbonate. Yeah, yeah. So yes, if you, the, the really like if you need to go, you know, nuclear, you should go on Amazon and buy trisodium per carbonate, and that essentially is um, pure oxyclean, and that stuff works really well. You do a couple of doses of that, and uh, that'll pretty much dissolve anything in a washer. Uh, someone said our set beads just as bad as fabric top. I don't even know. Those, those things look like they're just made out of wax or something. I, I would I would venture to say I, I I've never used them before. And quite frankly, I don't think I would use one, so I guess that would answer your question. <laughs> so if you want your clothes to like have a scent after they're done. I mean, just put a dryer sheet in the dryer. I mean, there's probably, I don't know, there's probably like less damage you could do waxing up your dryer than the, your washer. Like, mm. your dryer will just perpetually smell like dryer sheets, whereas your washer starts to turn into a science experiment. Ugh. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bunky's Workshop is also on the the dishwasher soap. Um, two scoops of Cascade and hot water. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same principle. I mean, you're trying to get grease. You're trying to cut grease away. So, I mean, it's uh, doesn't surprise me that, I don't, although I don't think I've ever tried, maybe I have, I don't know. I use, I have those finish tabs. I can't remember if I've ever tried to put it in a washing machine or not. I'm gonna have to uh, run over and get our lunch here in a minute, I think. Send Jim. Oh, yeah, he's no. here. Since I'm like- take a walk. Since I'm keeping him from the sink. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, this is not going to work. Use the drill bit. Cleaning always takes longer than fixing, that's for sure. Like cleaning the appliance, especially when you're like kind of going into the nitty gritty, it, um, it's quite frankly why we, we we're kind of not the cheapest appliance store in town, that's for sure. But like this is basically why, because it's, uh, you know, not only, like so I clean like the interior of most machines and then once it gets fixed and tested, it gets sent to the floor where my detailer cleans literally every crack and crevice of the outside of the machine. And, you know, you get about as close as you can to a new machine, you know, that's, that's really possible. And it takes time. It's a, uh, it's significant effort. That's for sure. I gotta see, I'm missing this. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah, someone said sodium tripolyphosphate is what you're thinking of. It used to be one of the main ingredients in laundry, laundry detergent before being banned. No, 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 though. No, that's not. Not the same one. That, that is an excellent for boosting your laundry. Mm. 
but the, the tris, what did I say, trisodium? <laughs> Go look at my on my Amazon history, man. I guess I just ordered it. I know Rick took my last my last bag. Right, so let's see. Let's see here. Just put like yeah, you ordered too much stuff. Just try put put in the search trisodium. I'm pretty sure it's trisodium. No, it's sodium percarbonate. Oh, okay. Sodium oh, yeah. sodium percarbonate is pure oxyclean. Yeah. That's what it is. Ninety nine percent so, minimum purity. Yeah, that's wow. the stuff. Yeah, you yeah. put a scoop of that in and that like it's good. Like yeah. that's that's probably the only chemical other than like mechanical cleaning, aka scrubbing, uh, that I've ever thought made any type of difference. But what what the what the user was saying that is a uh, trisodium phosphates that's phosphates that's mm. what we replaced phosphates with enzymes back in I don't know not too long ago because the phosphates is what causes all the algae blooms on the lake. Oh right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, it's like a, they use it as a fertilizer, and the fertilizer runs off. It's not because of the detergent. It's because of the farmers that use fertilizer, and so it runs off. Did you, uh, you three-pieced it, huh? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Actually, no, I didn't. It, I partially three-pieced it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what that is. completely submerged in grease. So how do I clean that out? <sighs> Looking around the shop for something I could use, right? Uh, like a Q-tip would have been ideal, but... What about... I do I have a skinny screwdriver that I could I kind of just like get some like a baby this. punch? No, no. I, I need like a I need to like scoop it out. It's like full of sludge. I think there's a screw in there. I want to clean that. Yeah, I'll use this. I want to clean that this plastic thing at the bottom. It's like it's like harboring disease or something. <laughs> Put your head in there. It like adds a filter over your voice. <laughs> We got 34 con concurrent viewers right now. Very cool. Maybe this should be a Saturday thing. Yeah, maybe we should do it every Saturday. What do you guys think? Would you guys want to see a live stream every Saturday? It would have to be about this time, like 12-ish, yeah. mm -hmm. something like that. So if we close at 2. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind. If you guys are down, I could do it. I know I've been slacking on uploading videos as of like the last, like forever. Someone said yes in all caps. <laughs> well, oh yeah, a lot of yeses. Would love it. Yes, thumbs up. Oh, uh, how's the the quality look and everything? Is it all you know smooth? No buffering. Everything seems good. Cool. I want to see what type of screw is holding that thing down, and it's so caked in there. All right. Thanks, guys. What do you say? Is it going yeah, good? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Not too shabby. There's that. I was worried about the internet for a minute, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we do have kind of spotty internet. Oh, 
I wonder if it's a Phillips screw. Maybe more lighting. Yeah, we could maybe, yeah, we could definitely do that. Maybe even, if, if we figure out a way, we can maybe even add like a second camera angle. Oh, they said lighting's bad. Lighting's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it kind of looks good while I'm looking at the screen, but yeah. you can never have too much light. Right. Guys, my service room is in a windowless room. <laughs> it's like a it's gulag. Like, it's like a gulag, yes. It's very well put. There's got to be a screw in there, and I just can't. I can't see it. Could you steam it? Someone said maybe steam it. Yeah, I grabbed the steamer. That'll, I mean, that'll at least help. Otherwise, I'm just going to scrub it, and, I mean, the washer will flush out most of it. All right, you'll need to put water in it. No, I just, I just filled it, actually. Oh. That's good. It's good. The more water you put, the longer it's going to take to warm up. Yeah, I just turned it on. It's good. This is another really nifty tool, guys. This is a uh, handheld steamer, and... Uh, we mostly use it for refrigerators. We uh, like when the dr the drains get clogged. What I'll do is I'll attach like a hose to the tip, and I could take the tip and run it down the the pipe and really kind of steam it out. Someone said more lighting. Could I just plug in this other? Yeah, grab that other spotlight right there. Let's see, I mean, if you put it like right behind the camera, that should probably be suffice. <laughs> Yeah, you could hit that plug over there. Yeah. And then like adjust the color on it so that it's not too yellow. yellow you said yeah it turned the yellow down it's just like does that seem good yeah I think so how's that look guys someone said if we could link the steamer that we got yeah go on um go on Amazon okay. and uh again you can look at my purchase history or you could just Oh, there it is. I found the screw. Jeez. Oh, that's getting washed in the sink. Guys, this smells as bad as it looks. Oh. It's like pure P U R Street Steam. I was gonna say steam, but it's a stream. Oh wow, yeah, it's very affordable. Yeah, it's cheap. It's like what, 30 bucks or something? Yeah. Get linked. I will post the, the steamer in the chat right now. That Amazon link will take you to
guess what washer set you use at home? Which what? Which washer set that you use at home? So I have two sets. I have a probably late 90s era KitchenAid washer, which is basically a direct drive, a Whirlpool direct drive washer. And I have an LG front loader set. So that's what I, that's what I have at home. My LG front loaders are not, they're not the ones with turbo wash. I, um, I brought home a set that quite frankly was sitting on the floor for too long. And so I needed to get them out of the, get them out of the shop. And I just adjusted the water level on them. I turned it, uh, I turned it up, so it uses a pretty significant amount of water, and uh, it works pretty good. It's uh, definitely a good machine. All right, I think we're good on that. Oh yeah, that would be a good idea. Uh, this guy said that we should put the washer on something so you can kind of rotate it more freely. Oh, like a like, like, a little one, cart like one of the many carts that yeah, we have yeah, laying that'd around. Be perfect. That, that had crossed my mind as I was uh, moving them, but mm -hmm. the idea is is to not move it so many times. <laughs> right. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch now. Sorry for the delay, but I certainly don't want to take this machine apart just to clean it. And who knows if, I'm, if it's even going to work. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I have a 100% success rate with the Neptune bearings. It's pretty good. I'm probably like 90%. I think there's only been a few that I haven't been able to uh, fix over the years. Someone asked if it's possible to adjust the water level on, on most front loaders. Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, the LGs are pretty easy. Mm. Like, Samsung has, like, a pretty complicated fill sensor. It's, like, got multiple screws. I've never tinkered with it before, so I can't say. Uh, but my understanding is that they're all adjustable, per se, because it's, like... So gross. That's like stained. Are LGs really that good? I currently have an Electrolux 70 Series Wave Touch. Electrolux 70 Series Wave Touch. I've never heard of that one. I think that's that, like that gray one that we had. You remember it oh. kind of had that like smooth rounded yeah. front? I, I think it's like a, a Google it. See if it, I think that was the icon is what I'm thinking of. Look up that Wave Touch. I don't, I, I'd recognize it if I saw it. Oh, no, that, that looks like the set we had in, I think. Oh, no, that's not it. Whoops. Here we are. Uh, yeah, we've probably seen this in here before. Let me see. Well, maybe. We had that in the apartment size mm. before. I had all those 24 inch washers. That's that's what that machine was. Oh, uh, I actually had one of those then. That's yeah, it. yeah, 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 that's exactly right, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I like a, that washer a lot. It's a good performing washer. That The only issue that I have with Frigidaire Electrolux is like when they break. Mm. It is like the, the stack units, the Frigidaire stack units that are like need every single control board. Like there's like six of them on the machine. It's infuriating. And you cannot like, you can never pinpoint which board is bad. You just gotta like start changing boards until you fix it. 
It's like a terrible way to live. Um, fire alarm tech guy. Yeah, we do. We do still sell LGs. Yes, we do still sell LGs. So guys, I'm going to take a small bit of oil and uh, I'm just going to wipe the inside where the bearings are going to go. Call it superstition maybe, I don't know. It's just, uh, maybe I'm, I'm hoping to displace any little water that's stuck in there and maybe the bearing will slide in a little nicer for me. Um, the this guy's talking about the Frigidaire gallery sets from the 2000s. Is that the one that uh, you said the dryer was fantastic on that we had in? Like saying it was super quiet or whatnot? Yeah, so yeah. like uh, he's probably talking about the front loaders that are... Yeah, he says there's only one board that can go bad on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it was a big... So they eventually came out with one with two boards, but the, it had a mechanical timer and it had a motor control board. And yeah, that was a pretty solid machine. Those were, uh, uh, I don't know why Frigidaire stopped making that. They had the only machine that you could install it underneath a kitchen cabinet, mm -hmm. like, in a, like under the counter. Okay. <laughs> Someone said this is kind of like that wood workshop show on WBIZ. I'm, I'm unfamiliar personally, but you might know. I think he's talking about, like, is that Bob Vila? It might be. Thank you. Oh. Right. Thank you, Jim. All right, so when you buy my kit, the basic kit comes with two new bearings and the seal kit set. All top of the line, genuine OEM. And if you get the deluxe kit, it comes with a replacement belt too. And the belt is important. I'll show you towards the end on that one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the bearing in. And I'm going to do the front one first just because the washer happens to be pointing that way. And so what I do, guys, is I just find the old bearing, and I'll place it right in front of the new bearing, and I'll just gently tap it in. If I could ever find my sledgehammer, I think I have it in the sink. And there it is. I'll be right back.
perfect. Oh. Almost installed a new old bearing old too. Jeez. Oh, uh, let me grab my steel pull it out. That's what the. That might flat. <laughs> I actually never had that happen before. I guess there's a first time for everyone. So you know you're like in when you're like tapping with your hammer and like the sound drastically changes. It goes from like a low pitch to an extremely high pitch. And if you're hitting your hammer, you'll know that you like kind of hit the end because it's like doesn't go. I don't know. And it feels different when you're tapping on it. It feels like you're hitting against something extremely solid. And that's when you know you're in good shape. Well, it, when just watching it, it looks as though you're hitting the outer ring as well as the bearing, and that's why the sound changes. Like the metal ring around the... Oh, no, no, it was still sticking out for it that. It was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, when, you, when the bearing, like, sets in the back, like, there's, like, a, I don't know, like, a seat or something for it, that's when it's, like, seated all the way. It just makes a weird noise. It's like a noise that you can't mistake in. It's just what it is, so... Okay, so now we gotta put the back bearing on and the spacer. Guys, yeah, it's really important that you reinstall the spacer no matter how annoying it is because the way it works is that the spacer kind of like joins the two bearings together and I don't know the exact science behind it, but what it does is it essentially like quadruples the lifetime of the bearing because it like equalizes the load better or something like that. Um, I know it's like a thing, it was a thing with skateboards, like there were spacers between the bearings and they made a big difference on how long your bearings lasted. Um, same thing applies for washing machines. Uh, again, I don't remember the, the science behind it, but I, th that's what I think it is. Uh, somebody asked me over the, I don't know, over the years, is there's a difference. This side is like completely flat, and then this side has a little bit of a taper to it. And quite frankly, I've never really understood what the difference is. I've always installed it with the flat side facing towards the front main bearing. And I don't know if it's right or wrong. Unfortunately, every time I pop the bearing out, the, the spacer flies out, and I basically have no way of knowing which orientation it is. But um, I don't, quite frankly, I don't think it makes really that big of a difference. It's, I don't know. At the end of the day, they're both just touching the bearings, like, you know, like this. And I don't see, uh, unless somebody knows differently, I'd love to hear it. That's for sure. I don't know. Let me see. Let me look closely at it and see if I can see my if I have any witness marks on this thing. Okay, what do we got here? You know what? There's a small chip right here, and I bet you a nickel that's from my chisel. So I bet you I tapped the the rear bearing out first, right? Yeah. So maybe this slightly tapered side goes towards i'm going to do it that way because i think that this little chip is kind of tells a big story so that's that's what i'm going to do okay so yeah i'm going to do the tapered size towards the big bearing It'll work out. I mean, it'll make contact. Okay. So with this, this spacer, you want to tap in the rear bearing just enough that this spacer will still wiggle a little bit. 
but not very much because when we put the shaft in um, we need this to be able to kind of you know jiggle it in place and then we could kind of either tap in the bearing the rest of the way or we could wait till we put the uh, the rear uh, bolt on and kind of draw the, the the bearing in the rest of the way. I think I'm going to try and just tap it in all the way and see if that works out. Uh, if not, you know, we could always try and draw it in with the, uh, with the rear nut. Should I? I should probably spin the washer around, huh? I'll spin it around again. That cart is sounding more and more like a better <laughs> idea. Sorry, we're in the home stretch now. It is significantly lighter when it's like missing the top. <laughs> okay. close. Getting closer. All right. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to, I'm going to put the shaft in and then I'm going to try and seat the bearing in all the way by tapping around it. I don't think I've ever tried that before. Somebody had mentioned, somebody had called and told me about that. That's how they did it. So, I don't know, we'll see. I'll take the tub back out because I still have to install like the seal and stuff. But I'm gonna try and just use it as a guide. Put some oil on this. It like lines everything up, so I'm gonna just try and tap it the rest of the way in. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna try not to hit the, the shaft. I think that's it. 
it's a little deceiving because it kind of feels like it's in, but I don't know, second guessing myself or. Oh yeah, that's it. So this spacer is in there tight now. Huh. That's a cool little uh, life hack there. Okay. Whew. All right, so this is like the hardest part and we're done with that. So the next thing is, is we're gonna get the seal ready. We're gonna put that in. Then we're going to uh, basically start reassembling everything and We'll give it a quick courtesy spin, and I think we'll be done. I think that's probably pretty much going to end our live stream. How long has it been going for now? Oh, we're about an hour and a half in. Damn. Yes. Yeah. Hour and a half for a bearing job. That's why we don't really do too many. Yes. <laughs> and a half well, I will say I have been taking my time um, if I if I could work right in front of it and not like off to the side I, I'd probably be a little bit more productive but then you guys wouldn't really see anything so kind of take the fun out of that so guys there's like a little hole that you'll see at about the I don't know five o'clock four o'clock position that's just a weep hole you could grab like a paper clip and uh, clear it out if it's if it's clogged. So you just need a little paper clip and open it up and just kind of. Basically, what the purpose of that is, if some water does inadvertently get past the seal, um, it'll drain out there. And um, I think the reason that they put it at the five o'clock position and not like six straight down is be probably because some water does pass through and they don't want the washer to leak and if a tiny drop just gets back there and sits it'll probably evaporate before it'll cause any trouble well, that's my theory on it i don't know what do i know okay okay so the o-ring These two washers and the bolt are for the back. We have to replace those with fresh ones. And then you have two seals, a spacer piece, and then this little plastic cup is the seal install tool. Now, both of these seals are in fact two pieces. So if you look at this one, you see there's like the tin hat and the rubber part. And this one is the same thing. Okay. This has a tin hat and then the rubber seal. When you took the old seal out, this tin hat was stuck to your shaft. It no longer is the case now, so we're going to put it in like that. Now, some people have installed the, the, the metal part on the shaft like first and then like join the two seals together i i don't know i'm not really feeling too hip to that so i'm just going to install the seal as a whole like i always do and so this plastic piece just fits right over like this and now you're ready to install your seal Okay. 
That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll get the salt order. And so, and then as soon as I get it, I'll give you a call. If you have the older style seal, when you took out the front seal, you would have found this little wishbone looking guy uh, behind it. So it would have been something like, like this together. And so if you have the old style, you're going to use this and you're not going to use the new seal. So regardless of what kit, what parts you use, you're always going to wind up with extra parts in the end because this kit is designed to fit every Maytag Neptune that ever existed with the only exception is if you have a Maytag Neptune that has a window in the door, uh, that particular one was made for one year and it was made by Samsung. And so this kit won't apply to that. But basically if your washer looks like this in any kind of way, shape or form, like with this slanted front and the tub and like kind of looks like this, generally speaking, then it's a Neptune and this kit will fit. So you don't really need to verify too much with the model number. But if you guys, uh, if you're not sure, if you're thinking about doing this job and, and you're not 100% sure, you could always call the store or send us an email and we'll, uh, you know, we could always look it up for you. It's really uh, no trouble. Okay, so I'm going to put the, I'm going to get the tub kind of in the camera here. And then we're going to put the O-ring on and... Oh, would you believe it, Marcus? It didn't come with the Molly coat. Really? That is that not the second bag that didn't have that? It is. That is something. Uh, I have I have some grease, so don't don't worry about it. You know, the the there should be like a tiny little packet of Molly coat that we uh, put on the uh, the shaft of the machine to keep it from ever seizing so here's the you notice it cleaned up pretty well I mean there is certainly some corrosion on it but this is not like really pitted or anything like this is in really good shape I'd say like kind of remarkable shape honestly but the o-ring is gonna sit right in this bottom corner and so we need to make sure that that's like super clean i'm going to use my dremel again sorry guys i know it's noisy but um if you don't have a dremel you could always just use like a wire brush or something It's just not quite reaching. You know, attention to detail is kind of the difference between these bearings lasting three months and 20 years. You know, you just got to make sure you do it right. This is obviously not like a super easy job. And don't get intimidated by it, guys. Like, so I haven't done this bearing job since, oh gosh, it's probably been a few years. These Neptunes are becoming... Uh, more and more scarce, that's for sure. Yeah, we don't get them in very often because, quite frankly, most people who have them, they keep them. 
So this is basically my first time doing it in four years. So I'm definitely a bit rusty. An extra five minutes of cleaning will make you feel a lot better about yourself. Okay. Now I just gotta find that tiny little O-ring that I set down somewhere. Gotcha. But it's terrible. Did you see where I set that, Marcus? You might be sitting on top of it. Oh no no no! I put it in this cup. Let's see, it's like I put it somewhere safe to immediately forget about where <laughs> I put it. And so the O-ring goes in the very bottom, all the way down. There's actually kind of a groove for it. It'll kind of squeeze in there as you push the, um, once you put this in, this little O-ring is gonna sit against the, the, that little inside lip of that metal seal. And then when you tighten down the bolt, it squishes it and it'll, uh, you know, kind of put it in its place. So we're ready to install. I'm gonna put this all together and I'm gonna complete the front I'm going to spin it around, we'll complete the back, and then we'll spin it around one more time and we'll give it a go and then that'll be it. It should turn like super smooth when you're done, like really smooth. If it doesn't, you did something wrong. And so we'll test it again after it's complete. You know, that really bothers me. That hasn't come out. clean this tub cover real quick too.
We still had 30 something people? Yeah. Huh. 36. Well, you guys are troopers. It's <laughs> a long one. I know. Some people are talking about um, the GE front loaders with the odor fresh feature that, you know, basically has to do with um, it just has a keeping thing. the, yeah, keeping the, the whatever, the seal clean, but, you know, just leave it open. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, just leave the door. <laughs> it's a true story. Okay. Ray, you're a real trooper. <sighs> Good thing is the heating element. They obviously never used this heating element because it got soap scum built up on it. But we'll certainly run it. Is there it like a po is there a uh, a setting for that, like a post cycle. Yeah, you, no, you literally just press the button for the water heater. Oh, and it, like you know, interesting. Like, get hot water. <laughs> get like hot hot water. Let me get this top propped up again. <sighs> Putting the door gasket on is going to be like the worst. That is. The biggest pain in the butt. When you're doing this. <laughs> That's funny. Someone I know went to the US on a holiday. They had no idea what Clorox bleach was. So they used it on their dark clothing in a washer. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> oh, no. It'll... Too excited. Someone asked, I have a slightly different Neptune, but same uh, vintage. It doesn't have a filter nor a trap that is accessible. Should I be cleaning it somehow regardless? No, so if you look back on my video, that white plastic thing is like the lifetime coin catcher. It basically keeps anything large from passing through um, and getting to the, the, the pump. So there's really no easy way to get to it. So you have to, you have to just be careful and not, not put a bunch of quarters in your machine because once that gets clogged up, you're gonna have a, like obviously you're gonna have a draining problem. And really the only solution is to pull the front tub out and clean that plastic thing. I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessary to do unless, like I wouldn't take it apart unless there was an issue. Yeah. So if you pull the tub out, more than likely you're gonna have to change the seal. And that, you know, as we all know, that seal kit's becoming more and more difficult to come by. But we still have plenty in stock, guys. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> they got kids to feed, man. <laughs> I say, really, though, it's kind of about sa like saving this particular machine. Like, I, I really do like this machine. I don't know why I don't have one at my house. I, I guess my wife kind of keeps me in check because like otherwise I'd have like a lot of machines at home. So I guess if I had unlimited laundry room space, I would probably have a set of these, but my parents have a set. So if I ever 
feel like using them, which I do once in a while. When they go to Greece, I, uh, I'll use their, I'll go over to their house and I'll use their machine once in a while just to kind of use it, you know, just to keep it from rotting away. I'm actually surprised there's, there's there no ground wire? Huh. That's, that's really interesting. Oh. Maybe from the factory they forgot to ground the, the heater. Or maybe they just didn't need to. That's strange. Okay. Well, we'll just move on from that. Oh. <laughs> oh boy, someone said their garage has about 15 washers in it and they're all hooked up, or most of them are hooked up. Had to get draining ins drainage installed and my boyfriend got a water manifold installed too. The only problem is the breakers. <laughs> well, if you're running like you're 15 right. <laughs> at once, yeah, yeah. That, that's a lot of amps, man. I mean, I, I mean, I would probably not use more than maybe two at a time. But then again, like those older machines, like some of those older machines, they pull. Like that one Frigidaire that I have, that mm -hmm. that uh, the the Unimatic one, like mm -hmm. that thing when it goes into spin, like that pulls like 13 amps. Holy, like that's light dimming that's serious like yeah. if there's anything else plugged into the to that outlet like it's going to trip the breaker probably right so yeah it's uh you kind of have to be careful about that yeah stuff. he was saying he has a 16 amp breaker so yeah that'll do it yeah i mean it depending on what kind of wire they ran if they ran a uh, number 12 wire you could bump it up to a 20 amp breaker but if you didn't, then I don't know what to tell you. So guys, this door gasket is kind of yes. gross. I'm not going to clean it because um, my detailer will clean it. What he'll do is he'll like wipe some bleach on it and then just like let it sit and let the bleach do its work. And then um, really that's about it. The only other thing is you wanna make sure some of your Neptunes have this like little drainage tube. You definitely wanna make sure that that is clear and not full of gunk. Like this one's got a little nugget of something in there and we're gonna remove it. And I just turned on my steamer again, and I'm going to shoot a little steam through it. Because if water sits at the bottom of your gasket, it's almost inevitable that it's going to... There we go. Really loosens up the dirt, that's for sure. gasket is we're gonna have to clean it and set it back maybe if it goes all right attach part B to part A Careful not to mix up part C with part B or something like that.
do some what were the small screws for the quarter inch screws that was for the back panel that's what that was the top and then lid switch I'm like tired tired I am I am I feel like the last couple of weeks I've been waking up like too early I think how early have you been waking up I mean like 5.45 in the morning, like, yeah, it's been, like, early, early. Okay, these last two are for holding the top down. And that makes all my screws accounted for. So don't forget to hook up your tube. I'm gonna need a pair of pliers for this one now because my, my fingers are hurting. Yeah, this is like the most difficult part is the cable. Did you guys know that ultimately this was the washer that put Maytag out of business? It wasn't solely because of this machine, but this machine had a couple pretty gnarly recalls that Maytag did end up honoring and they fixed everybody's machines, including like the class action lawsuit on the bellow, the door gasket, and all that stuff. So, I gotta hand it to them. They went out of business with some class, at least. Right, the right way. I look. It it wasn't particularly this machine. The the it's like they had that the the. The dependable care washer but then they like started like trying to like make different neat machines like they made the atlantis the the magic chef one which was like a really really crummy design and um you know they're just like why are you trying to reinvent something they already had like a really good um a good thing going and they just they really screwed it up honestly is very, it's kind of sad because Maytag was one of the good ones. Okay, let's see. If I could. I'm going to 
to see if maybe one of my LG tools will help with the installation of the spring. And I don't think so. Oh, that would have been perfect if it would have. But I don't think it's going to stretch enough. Unfortunately, there's like literally no easy way to do this other than you can, like lose a finger going. Yeah, man. <laughs> So close too. It was like so close. Switch over to the needle nose. See if that helps. I'll get it on the third try, guys. I don't know how or why, but I used to be so good at this. Like, different I was like, tool? putting this spring on. Like no, or did you use a different tool? No, I don't know what I did. I honestly I can't remember. There was a time when, like, these machines were, like, coming in, like, in bulk. Like, bulk bulk like many more than like you would ever you would ever think and that's why I don't have ice slack there Ah, uh, Kevy, that's a loaded question <laughs> Whirlpool versus GE versus LG versus Samsung versus Electrolux First through third place and why? Oh jeez. Oh jeez. That's a different live stream, man. <laughs> Let's save some for the second live stream, maybe. <laughs> Can make a whole video on that. I used to be able to do this with like laser precision and now it's like it's like a real struggle for me. Ah, I guess the third time was the charm. There we go. Make sure I'm in. Oh guys, I guess I I did bleed a little bit. I split my nail just a tiny bit. That last spring came out with some 
some real force, that's for sure. Okay, so where am I at now? I'm basically done. I could put the front cover on and close up the top, and then we'll spin it around and put the pulleys on, and then we'll be in good shape. You guys all get trophies for toughing it out. It's like a marathon. Well, let me close up the top first. potential bomb in the laundry room. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I agree with that. I mean, not because of the exploding washer thing. I mean, that was, like, pretty bad. But, I mean, Samsung's, like, a pretty crummy appliance. Like, I guess I, it would be hard for me to, like, pick out first, second, and third. But I'd probably be able to pick out, like, last place yeah. and, like, second last place. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of them, it's kind of like a matter of kind of your personal preference. You know what I mean? Like it's... Samsung should stick to phones. That's a good point. I heard they make good TVs too. Yeah. But Apple made a washer. Apple came out and was like, yeah, we're going to dive into the washer industry. <laughs> Do you hear they're going to make a car? Will they, like, propose making If a Apple makes a washer, <laughs> it's going to cost, like, $7,000, and you're going to need to, like, have some sort of subscription. Like, <laughs> that is for sure what they're going to do. Like, it's Subscribe gonna, to get water. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, you got to pay, like, Apple, Apple Water Plus or something like that <laughs> just to get, like... <laughs> like, this whole, like like subscription like based economy is so annoying like i hate it like i don't want to subscribe to like uh, what was that like that that microsoft office yeah so like so however many years ago five six years ago like like any normal human being you go to the you order Microsoft Office, and you pay like what, two hundred bucks for it or something? Put a disc in your computer, and you own it, right? Because you bought it. Yeah. And then like my computer did an update, and all of a sudden it like totally like nerfed my um like it it, it like deleted my like Word and stuff. And I didn't realize it at the time, but like I mean they kind of got you by the neck at that point because it's like either update your computer or or <laughs> Apple iWash <or> Wash Plus. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. They're that's funny. These guys are too smart for me, man. And of course, it'll be not repairable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Showing up to the Apple Store with a dolly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, another reason I could tell this has been worked on before is uh, this like dispenser housing is cracked. Mm. So, I don't know. I think somebody did get into this machine before. 
you think it was the bearing job? I don't know. I mean, that bearing is like a straight up China bearing. So for some reason, I remember um, Maytag having like a slightly different brand of bearing. I, I like, it wasn't like a brand name, like a Timken or, or anything, but it was like, it didn't just say flat out made in China. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. Okay. Home Close. stretch. Home stretch. Fully. We're doing the new. So you're going to put the little washer and then the big washer. And we're going to tighten until super snug. And that's my technical term. Maytag calls for like 37 foot pounds. Does that ring a bell on that? Uh, mm, sounds right. I think it was like 37 or 38, but basically it's like if you're just torquing on your ratchet, like once it starts to become difficult, and like once you see the washer starting to like kind of cave in, then you're pretty much right there. And no matter what, you should be able to turn your machine effortlessly. This is when you know you've done it correctly. Like, it's really this smooth. Okay. You need a zip tie? I do need a zip tie, yes. So I'm not gonna blast my fingers off today. So the new belt does come with these isolator things. Guys, quite frankly, I'm not gonna install these isolators because they never really go bad. But let me show you the difference between a new belt and an old belt. So, see how stretched out the belt is? Like, this belt is gonna slip very soon. And also, so this is gonna be really difficult to install. And a lot of people who buy my kit, they really, they call and say I sent them the wrong belt because they can't get it on it's like this is way too tight so the trick is you take a zip tie and you zip tie your belt to the pulley and then simply oh yeah that's perfect where are my uh, scissors? Yeah, scissors. Here, just use these. You can use these. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, it's even better. And then you snip off the. And there you have it. So these are elastic belts, and they stretch on, and eventually they lose their elasticity, and they're no good. Okay. You know how many years it's been since I've done a... I think the last Neptune video I did was, was last the last one. time I actually done Neptune <laughs> bearings, which is... I think that video is like two years ago. I think it's older than that. Oh, wow. Well, I, I don't know. It's, I, I think it's older than two. Where did I put my drill now? Thank <laughs> you. 
Good as new. Hold on a second. Let me see if I could find my... Vintage Maytag Neptune door latch bypass kit. Oh. I don't think I have it, but... We're going to give it a spin, guys, and see how it works. See if I do, in fact, know what I'm doing, or am I just a fraud posing on the internet as somebody who knows what they're talking about? There are lots of people like that. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go to spin. I'm gonna do faster spin so it does the full size or full speed. That calls for 10 minutes, so. Does it go straight to spin? Well, yeah, there's a spin button. Oh. So you can like literally like advance it. If I did a good job, guys, you're not going to hear it spin. You have to take my word for it. Think about it. I don't like the door. Actually, it would have been a lot cooler to show the back because then you can see the pulley spinning. But mm. Next time, guys. Well, guys, while we're waiting for it to ramp up to spin, I'll do this again next Saturday if you guys like. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys, if you guys have any good ideas. I'm kind of limited to like the product that I have uh, on hand. Uh, but maybe if you guys want to see like a repair video or if you want to see like a wash video or whatever, I'll try and make it a habit of doing it every Saturday if possible. No promises, but I'll do it as regularly as I can. Because quite frankly, it was kind of fun, guys, honestly. Let me hear if it's spinning or not. Oh, there it is. I just had to be patient. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. 
Yeah, it sounds great. Hold on, it's going to go into full spin now. This should probably be, they'll be able to hear the full spin actually, because this, that motor kind of has like a weird whine to it. Mm. Okay. Well, it's definitely a success. <laughs> Minimal injury, plenty of dirty. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm tired. I'm going home. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for washing. Thanks for washing. <laughs> Thanks for washing. <laughs>